Welcome to the Ad Astra podcast. Today we have with us uh, Dr. Klaus Hebers from the EKGF. He is the, uh, the deputy director of the EKGF, um, which is uh, one of our partners together with the Warburg Institute. Uh, welcome, Professor. Um, welcome. <laughs> Um, so um, the IKGF is uh, a research, um, how shall college. I say, um, college, a, a project um, uh, which researches uh, prognostication, okay. centered on prognostication. Uh, and of course, astrology uh, is uh, completely aligned with that, with, that, uh, with that line of research. So um, please, could you tell us a little bit more? Yes. The IKEF is working with these themes since uh, 2009, and it's basically a cooperation of uh, sinologists and persons of the medieval world or, world, or perhaps better, the medieval words, because we can't talk only of one medieval atmosphere, but we have to take into consideration other other things too. And it's a little bit larger also because uh, the exact title is fate, freedom and prognostication. So there's a, an aspect of future also in, uh, in this title, but you are right. Uh, astrology is a very important theme of the IKRGF and we had several workshops on that. We had several research um, uh, and studies on, on this topic and very often, not in any case, but very often that were workshops with uh, in relation uh, with those who are doing um, or who are consulting uh, the Arabic documentation and those who are consulting the Latin documentation or the vernacular documentation. Yeah. Yes. Uh, we we had some 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 already some some guests here who were at the IKGF or belong to IKGF. We have Petr Schmidl who, who is working uh, with you. We yeah. had Jeffrey Kotick, which was a fellow at some point. Of course, Elena <laughs> was also a fellow, uh, and also Professor Stefan Eileen, who, who yeah who collaborated. Baron with Ratkin also. Yeah, so uh, I think a lot uh, of of today's. Um, main historians or work active historians of astrology have been at some point uh, some connection with with the the project which is uh, yes they are uh, in connection with the project and we had a strong uh, collaboration also with persons uh, working or publishing at Micrologos because they uh, uh, treated a lot of themes also connected with astrology and uh, foresee um, forecast or prognostication and uh, things like that yes one of the things i noticed um i was already kind of aware of it but when i you know i had my fellowship at the ikgf and i had the opportunity to talk to people there and people that were before me uh, having fellowships there is this strong connection because we we tend to to speak about east and west Mm -hmm. And this kind of, um, there are obvious differences, but then the strong connections and all the things that uh, happened in the Middle Ages uh, with um, kind of cultural exchanges between them. And this is very, very interesting. Uh, I think it's one of the things that is addressed in the, in the IKVF is these changes and differences. And at the same time, the connections that were established between yeah. each and as what we call East and West. So it's uh, fascinating, I would say. Therefore, one of our first volumes uh, was a little, uh, was a look at the medieval philosophy to see the reception also of different ideas and uh, the formulation of the proper position uh, respective to astrology. Because what you have in the early medieval time is different from that what you are getting from the 13th century onwards. Yes, 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 yes. 
Well, and uh, one of the um, the results of this project is the recent uh, volume that uh, was published. Now I would like you to have, say a few words about this. Yes, we are taking into consideration uh, the uh, effects of our studies of our work because we had many workshops, many studies on astrology, but also on other forms of prognostication. So we decided to make um, a handbook, a sort of handbook of medieval prognostication, which did not exist before. But this handbook has um, basically four lines, if you want so. Each theme is divided in a Latin tradition, in a Greek tradition, Byzantine tradition, which was very strong in the medieval uh, time too, an Arabic tradition and a, a Hebrew, Hebrew tradition or Jewish tradition, if you want so. And so we have these themes from four points of view. So we have a, some introductory um, essays, uh, about antiquity, because antiquity was important also for the medieval tradition, and uh, about the evolution in uh, early modern times, in the 16th, 17th centuries. But basically, the other themes are treated in all the time in four columns, if you want so. And uh, we have uh, this handbook of prognostication divided in different themes of prognostication, of vis um, uh, literature of vision, astrology, and other thing themes. And we have special articles at the end on uh, specific topics where we have um, specialists to describe that. Mm -hmm. So this volume is going to be published at the end of November with a um, thousand pages. So we hope that uh, this would furnish to everybody, uh, as you say in French, a point de départ. Point de départ et point d'arrivée, because it's kind of, it's, it, you call it a book, but it's actually more like an encyclopedia because it's so complete. And uh, I know that you know that you, I know that you don't think it's complete, it's never complete, but it's, it's not complete and we had a lot of work to do to manage uh, um, the addition of this volume because uh, you know you you know the situation you are more easy to find persons who are treating the uh, the latin traditions but there are very few persons who are treating the other traditions so byzantine studies we have for chairs, for example, in Germany. And uh, so it's very difficult because all, always the same persons have to do the same, <laughs> the double or the triple of work. It was very complicated to find persons, specialists for every theme. Uh, but I think finally um, we have a good result, but other people have to judge about that. <laughs> Well, it is a very impressive book. Uh, as soon as it is published, we will notify it in our site. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, from what I could Great. see, and I had the honor to contribute with a very small, uh, I wouldn't even call it an article. Entry. It's like an entry, a small note on, on th this book. It is a very impressive book. I would call it more like an encyclopedia. I know it's never, never finished, and it will never be, but it is, it is more than a, a point of departure. I think it's okay. kind of the state of the art of what we it's, have now. Yeah, it's a guide. And, 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 it uh, is a guide. A, it's a guide in any case. Yeah, that would be a very good expression. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Yeah, so uh, when, uh, when we talk about this book, we talk about several uh, techniques of prognostication or several ways of prognostication. Mm -hmm. But one of the things I read, because I had the opportunity to read the introduction, is uh, that astrology somehow uh, stands. I know that the book is not distinguishing between um, between several arts, several mantic arts. It is presenting all of them, but astrology is kind of something that is present in all uh, pre-modern world in a very strong um, stance. Mm -hmm. So um, how, how, what is your view on this? I know that you are not I'm not a specialist on this, but oh. uh, but it is very curious that astrology still has a very important uh, um, position if you are looking at the 
TV, Astro TV and things like that. Uh, polit <laughs> politicians in America, Germany and other countries, they uh, were consulting astrologers too. And we have a strong tradition um, in the West, I think, uh, from the courts, even the papal courts in the late Middle Ages to this modern times. Everybody tells, ah, it's not so secure, but let I me can, see. I can look at it at least <laughs> a little bit. Uh, that is, uh, that's not in, inconvenient. So uh, astrology is still very, uh, still very present. If you are looking at the horoscopes uh, and other things, and in other um, in other societies even more, because we have the comparison with the uh, Chinese uh, societies in this EKGF, and we see that even stronger. Uh, these uh, traditions are practiced in uh, uh, in China, and uh, the interesting question is um, if uh, a different position on these themes uh, has also very uh, big consequences on the status of society or the conceptions of society. How you can handle with future? Do you think that the future is in the hand of God, of the hand of stars, or do you think uh, believe in other things? Mm -hmm. Yes, that that is a, that is yes, and religion also interacts very much because very in much. Christian societies there's always the problem of uh, determinism and mm -hmm. not being licit mm -hmm. to practice mm -hmm. at least certain parts of astrology, while in uh, Chinese society or in Indian society. It's completely different. It's a completely different mind frame. Uh, I think you you have this idea because yes, of what yes. who well, is uh, studying yeah. also the Jesuits. I, I'm, I'm studying um, the Jesuits and their, their relation with astrology. I'm yes. finished my PhD. I'm in the last month, so trying uh, to wrap yes. up with things very quickly. And um, in in that, so we're talking about Europe and in, in, with the Jesuit, which is a, um, a religious order, and their practicing of astrology is quite interesting because you can see how these restrictions and, and this, um, these caveats that the Christian religion has to astrology shape the way that they are doing the things. Yes. Oh, sorry. Sorry for that. No uh, do you need to? Do you need no, to? no, no. It's, no, it's okay. It's okay. But uh, I think uh, that is the question. And astrology or the stars are present also in Christian traditions. If you are thinking of the uh, three persons coming to venerate Jesus, the three, uh, uh, the three kings coming, uh, uh, following the star. And if you are thinking at the way of St. James, the Via Lactea yeah. guiding Charlemagne to the tomb of St. James in Santiago de Compostela. This is not exactly astrology, but there are elements of astrology <laughs> introduced in, a, uh, mm -hmm. in other conceptions. Yes. 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 And, and for example, with the Jesuits, it's very interesting because when they reach China, and I had the chance to look at that briefly, uh, then you see the only place uh, in which you have a known publication in print of astrology by Jesuit author, and it's in Chinese, yeah. uh, which is a place where that can be more freely uh, expressed yes. uh, okay. with restrictions, which is still uh, an interesting way to see how things shift according to cultural background, religious background. And okay. well, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's very interesting not only to see the astrological tradition, but to see how astrology spread um, in different uh, in different edges, perhaps of of knowledge. Mm -hmm. yes, yes, and now it adapted to different cultures. And even uh, we were talking to uh, a person uh, that belongs to the uh, Jesuit society, and he was he said something very interesting that when the Jesuits uh, arrived to India and China and uh, Japan and later China, mm -hmm. they used different strategies for different peoples, different yeah. cultures. And for India, it was more like about uh, devotion. Mm -hmm. For Japan, it was about knowledge and mm -hmm. specifically yeah. astronomical, astrological knowledge. And yeah. they use similar, a similar uh, tactic or st strategy mm -hmm. in China. In China yeah. So astrology, together with astronomy, became yeah. like a vehicle for indoctrination, for religious indoctrination, yeah. which is very interesting because it's completely 
the, it's a full circle. So yes. yeah, in China we have this. Yeah. We have this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. It, 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 it um, plays a role, a very important role, I think, in pre-modern societies, and it is present in East and West uh, throughout. So it's, more, it's a global, uh, <laughs> it has a global it's presence. It's a global theme, but it's not the same thing everywhere. <laughs> exactly. <coughs> no, it isn't. It, it adapts. It's a very elastic uh, noise, adapts to different cultures. And um, if, when we talk to scholars like uh, Jeffrey Kotick, for instance, mm -hmm. Martin Danston, for instance, they study what is in the middle. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Sorry. So not Christian uh, astrology, so to say, not um, Chinese astrology, but all that... Uh, Transitioning. Trans yeah, this you know, transition. So the yes. And the way that it flows from yes. India. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, which is uh, incredible to see. Um, the person tradition. <clears throat> yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and so. and you see that how how the culture and the religion and the philosophy of each country will affect the way in which uh, astrology is practiced. Yeah. And uh, I think this would be the same thing <laughs> for other practices, other uh, prognosticatory yeah. practices will have different, different aspects uh, according to culture. Yeah, that, that is actually mm -hmm. a question I would like to ask you. Or, or when in the book you, you speak about different Latin, Greek and others, and um, is it very different? Uh, and I'm not only referring to astrology, but to all, the, all these prognostication techniques, is it very different? In some material, uh, in some material, it is different. I think so. I think, but uh, perhaps a person who is not introduced in the different uh, things would say this is nearly the same. But 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 it isn't because the conception of uh, the world behind this is different. Very often, we 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 have um, that's uh, we are not talking only on. Um, astrology in this book, for example, also of conception of apocalypse. In the Greek tradition, you don't have this book of the Bible. So it is completely different, a very uh, a conception of what is afterlife, after human life or life on earth, is different. It's not completely different, but it is another vision of, of that in, uh, in the Greek traditions. And so you have differences between that, but you have also a very strong possibility to pursue which um, traditions influenced other traditions. You can't see that all the time, but you have in this book at least a little bit some hints to, to, to comparison uh, or to reception and uh, uh, changements of traditions. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. how they contact and then how they receive and somehow adapt concepts. Adapt and transform also, yes. And transform, mm -hmm. yes. And I would believe in, in mantic practice which have this deep relation with the supernatural, Mm. The, the different relations of each culture with the supernatural yes. will mold, will shape yes. the same practice in, in different ways, uh, I would guess. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, re and resuming another question that you, you raised before, uh, the, the way uh, they accept the idea of prognostication, you ask, can things be predicted? Can we predict? Can the stars predict? Can the gods predict? Uh, so I suppose there are also uh, very interesting uh, differences between one culture and the other. Mm -hmm. So are there cultures that uh, reject this concept of prognostication? Because I've never met anyone. <laughs> I never, I never heard of anyone. Prognostication is possible. It's also always the question: Who is doing this pro prognostication? And you need, you need a certain legitimation for the persons doing that. And that is different. The persons you elect in different societies are different persons. And so you, there are differences, but the, the wish to, to do prognostication is present in all societies, I think. Yeah, I would say so also. But, yeah. but the possibilities of realizations are very different. <laughs> yes, yes. Yes. Yeah, we yes. always want to know the future in one yes. way or the other. Everyone wants to, yes. but uh, 
even even in the medieval ages when you say uh, there was a big scholar in germany hans blumenberg who told the curiositas was only invented uh, in the 15th century augustine prohibited curiositas because the wish to prognosticate is also a certain form of curiositas mm -hmm. but uh, i don't think so that it was invented in the 15th century with the humanists. It was invented before, or it was present at least. It was perhaps prohibited, but it existed. Yeah. If it was forbidden at a certain <clears throat> point, it was because it was there. <laughs> yes. Otherwise, yeah. they wouldn't have even mentioned it. Yeah. I think it was uh, always uh, part of our human nature. Mm -hmm. yes. Curiosity, yes. yes. Yeah. Trying so, to foresee, even if if naturally, uh, and yeah. what we would, would call today scientifically, foresee uh, the weather, um, how how will things develop, how certain events will play out in nature. Yeah, it's it's always there, in one form or the other. Yes. Well, the, the the weather is very important because for people who lived in agriculture, if they could foresee the weather, that would be extremely yeah. important for them yeah, we have a chapter on weather forecasting huh, in the book mm -hmm. oh. i'm looking forward for that because i think i've been as as i've been studying and of course in christian contexts especially later uh, early modern christian contexts, weather forecasting is almost the only thing that you can do without raising any problems uh, regarding uh, the christian faith so yeah. and even then there are a couple yeah. things that uh, better not touch. Uh, so I, mean, I think the weather prognostication is one, and I've been realizing this is one of the foundations of prognostication. I think for the human being, mm -hmm. perhaps derives from the, the biological sense uh, of existence so in a way that you are uh, dependent on how nature behaves. If you can, uh, if you need a cover uh, or a shelter or not, if there will be food available according to weather patterns. So I think in some sort, the, the prognostication of weather, the general condition of the, of the weather is, I think, one of the most essential, instinctual yeah. ways of prognostication, perhaps. It, it's directly related to survival. So, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, um, and, and still today we complain when the weather <laughs> channels don't, don't give us the correct information. Or, or if you if you want to have a conversation that is neutral and nobody is offended, we talk about the weather. It's, yeah. it's safe. It's safe. It's, safe it's important yeah. and safe yeah. and affect everybody. And it's apparently it's not so important if prognostication fails in this theme. But in other themes, if prognostication fails on the different courts of the late middle ages it was very dangerous <laughs> yes. yes very unpleasant <laughs> very unpleasant consequences but to predict sunshine and not rain or vice versa is is less important i think <laughs> yes maybe because if we predict it wrong today maybe you could write tomorrow there's always another day yeah. but yeah. if you predict the end of the world that is a different thing <laughs> a different thing yes yeah. That's one thing the astrologers complain. I've seen a lot of texts where one of the arguments is if you predict, I think they, they can usually compare it with medicine at that point. Is it, if a physician uh, gives a wrong judgment on the disease and the person dies, you blame the physician, you don't blame medicine. If an astrologer who is ignorant of what he's doing predict something wrong, you blame astrology and not the astrologer. That's Ptolemy. You're, yeah. you're quoting Ptolemy. <laughs> yeah, and it's it's an argument that I see constantly in the defenses of astrology. So you're quite yeah. right. There are some prognostications. If you fail, it's okay. If you if you don't, yeah, that's then the proper the prognostication itself, the act of prognostication and the the, um, the knowledge of problem that specific the knowledge and the, and the theme also. Huh? Yeah. You are predicting at the end of the world is another thing if you are predicting yes the enemy is approaching and that's not exactly easy he's, he's coming two days later that's not perhaps not so important if you are weaponed against that yes yes it, it, the consequences are different um you, you you talked about the inter intercultural changes and the uh transformations that these traditions um, suffer, so to say, in from one culture to the other. 
are there uh, and now I'm, I'm asking specifically for China are there some traditions that uh, are specific of China and never got to the West yes there are but I don't know. <laughs> we have to, to ask that to Michael Lackner I think <laughs> the synologists in our project but uh, there are some traditions to predict future with uh, um, with um, practices of uh, of channels and things like that that are nearly not similar to to western traditions that are that are specific to to chinese traditions and there are a lot of traditions too also of the west which never reach the east and vice versa but yeah. there are relationships but there are there are quite uh, striking differences still today mm -hmm. yes so mm -hmm. there are things that were adopted and adapted, and there are things that remain specific of each yes, culture. Yes, That's right. I think one can say it like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. All this uh, we'll be reading in the book by the end of this month, I suppose. Yes. So um, we will announce the book yeah, as yeah, soon as it as is soon as ready. It comes out, we're going to I'm very, it. very, very curious about the book. <laughs> yes. so, Curiositas. Is Thomas Aquinas <laughs> wouldn't be happy. <laughs> um, and, yeah. and do you have other projects after this one? Uh, yes, we have different projects. We we are publishing actually another small book with a series of conferences uh, we had about uh, um, prognostication and mantics in the uh, medieval. Um, um, in the medieval law collections, mm -hmm. uh, the law collections of the high middle ages, Burkhard von Worms, Grazian, and also the Leges Langobardorum and these things, because they are regulating also things of uh, prognostication. And there we had a look if specific practices were, were were coming from one collection to the next collection, or if there were changes in that, because mm -hmm. we never, very often you find in books, uh, Burkhard von Worms or other persons, Grazian, come um, documentation that these practices existed, but mm -hmm. sometimes they adapted it only from a, a more older collection to be complete in their system of, of law. So it's very important or we showed some ways how to to see if uh, things were practiced or if they were only written as a normative uh, documentation. Yeah, that is right. That's very interesting. And this, this other volume would be... Uh, yes, this is coming out this uh, at the end of this year too, in, but uh, in another... Um, um, edition house, not in Brill, uh, not in uh, De Greuter, but in uh, um, Böhlau Verlag, Archiv für Kulturgeschichte. Mm -hmm. okay. and, we'll main, and mainly with uh, contributions in German. Okay. Oh, that is a pity. <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, two, I think uh, there are two in English, but uh, mainly in German. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. And uh, uh, the IKGF is also has. Uh, um, a magazine, a journal on yeah. publication, yeah. which is recent, uh, if, I, if yeah. I'm correct. Um, if, if you have an article about your project to be published there, you are welcome. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. We thank do. You. We will have. <laughs> thank yes. you very much. Okay. 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 So I think. Yes. Uh, so, uh, Professor, I thank you very much for being our guest and having the time to, to speak about this okay. project, the book, uh, and the work. Maybe we thank can... You very, thank you very much. Good luck for the Astra thank project you. in Portugal. Thank you. And hopefully we meet also in persona soon, but yes. that is not dependent on our decision, but on uh, other things, on COVID-19, and yeah. nobody can give a prognostication, I think. Well, yes. not yet. <laughs> yeah. uh, but anyway, we will uh, we will meet in person. Um, yeah, that for at some point. Eventually. Yes. <laughs> eventually. Very good. Thank very much. Thank you very much.